that's pretty fast. I'm getting good speed. Guys, you see this? I'm getting possibly 80 or maybe even 90% of my power from the arm action alone. Now, it's not truly the arm action alone. Naturally, when we surf, there's gonna be torso rotation involved. So the torso, even when I'm sitting down, is helping the arm to accelerate more. But the fact is that the arm action is responsible for the vast majority of power on the tennis serve. So guys, that first camera angle was a little bit deceiving because you couldn't see whether the serve was going in or not. So let's put this theory to the test. I'm gonna hit a few serves and you'll be the judge. I'm gonna hit them from the chair and I'm gonna stand up to my normal serve and you can see the speed difference. So the first problem is the neck clearance because I'm sitting on a chair the trajectory is much lower, but the speed itself is pretty quick, I have to say. So let me try to go a little bit faster. There you go, that's not bad. Ah, gotta try to make contact as high as I possibly can. And let me try four more. Come on, Nick, get over the net. There you go, and one more. All right, not too bad. All right, so now I'm gonna stand up and we're gonna test the speed on my regular serve. I'm gonna see the difference. Okay, I'm gonna try a few more. Okay, that one probably felt the best out of all of them so far. Let me try one more. This is gonna be my last one. Okay, that one felt pretty good. So. Is there a difference? Yes, there is, of course. But just looking at the speed of the serve, the one from the chair was slower, but how much slower? I would guess it's somewhere between 10 and 20 miles an hour. Which means that most of the power comes from the arm action. But I don't want you to get confused with the message that I'm bringing to you in today's video. You are not supposed to do what I did from the chair. You are not supposed to just get up to the baseline and arm the serve and go like this. Why don't you want to do this? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because if you do this over a long period of time, there's a high risk of injury. Why is that? Because the arm is not supported by the body. The body's number one job is to support the arm. Of course, the body does add power. Not as much as some people think to believe. I would guess it's somewhere between 10 and 20% of additional power from the body. But the context is even more important than the actual additional power that you're getting from the body. You are accommodating your arm by using your body and therefore protecting it. Not only will this protect you from potentially getting injured but also it's going to feel a hundred times better to use the entire body that's supporting the arm movement than just to stand there and use the arm in isolation see this serve just feels awful i actually feel something in my shoulder as opposed to a serve like this where i'm using my entire body <laughs> see that second serve felt super effortless it felt as if i wasn't even using the arm at all and that is the key you have to utilize the power sources on the serve to support the arm. And the serve should feel as if you're not using the arm at all. So what are the power sources? I made several videos on this subject. And my favorite one is where I use the ruler, which is a good illustration of how the body should be loaded on the serve. You basically have one end of the ruler here and the other end of the ruler there. And where the body is loaded somewhere in the middle, just like a ruler is. So let me break down the four power sources on the serve. The two power sources that I was able to utilize on the chair was swing momentum and angular momentum, what I call rotational momentum. So basically by swinging the arm, you do get some swing momentum. Of course, this will depend on your style of serves. There are some serve styles that will give you more momentum than other serves. For example, a serve with a lag has a continuous motion and you will be able to generate more swing momentum from that particular style. In addition to that, naturally on the serve, there's going to be torso rotation, which gives you additional power. Now, 
if you are able to coil your body and get the elbow on the outside, you are gonna increase this torso rotation and potentially get even more power. Now be conscious of the fact that coiling a lot is not something that everybody can do. Some players are not able to get out of a coil that's too large. The minimum amount of coil that you need on the serve is your elbow being in line with your torso. If you can get away with going further back, by all means, continue doing so. So swing momentum and rotational momentum are two important power sources that will give you a tremendous amount of heat on the serve. So what are the two other ones? Well, the next one I'm gonna show you is probably my favorite one, which I call forward momentum. Take a look at any high level server, you will see that they land inside the cord on the vast majority of their flat and their slice serve. Now this landing inside the cord is correlated to a toss that's inside the baseline and also to the body leaning forward into the ball. So in other words, the entire body weight is going into the contact. Now some people are of the belief that there is no forward momentum on a kick serve, but I'm here to tell you that there is. When you observe high level players or elite level players, you'll see that they land inside the court even when they're hitting kick serve. So even though you are going to throw the ball further behind than you would on a flat or a slice serve, there's no doubt about that, you still wanna lean in and get your body into the court, ideally making contact right above your head. So if you do this leaning movement, you will be getting forward momentum even on your kick serve, which will help you in those tense moments in a match where your arm is tight to get the ball over the net. And last but not least, the fourth power source on the serve is what I call vertical momentum. And there are several actions of the body that make the player go upwards. First of all, players achieve a tilt in their loading phase, in their trophy position, and that tilt is reversed. So this reversal action of the tilt accompanied with the rotation of the torso is an upward force and propels the player violently upwards. But that's not all. Players will also get on their toes, they will bend their knees, and now we're gonna get into some stylistic elements where some players will arc their body backwards in what I call a reverse C formation, and some players will do a forward reverse C. The greatest servers of all time will do a combination of all that. For example, Pete Sampras, where he has a forward C and a backward C and an extremely large coil and an extremely large tilt. So when the body is loaded in this particular way, the explosive movement upwards is so violent that the player gets propelled off the ground by a lot. Now listen, some of these things are stylistic, so you can't necessarily serve like Sampras if it doesn't suit your body type. But here's the thing that you gotta do. The tilting, it doesn't really require any athletic ability. So anybody can achieve a tilt and anybody can reverse a tilt. How much you load your body is gonna depend on your physical limitations. But everybody can get on their toes and bend their knees. That is what you can do. You're going to have a coil and how much backwards and forwards you can bend, you gotta test this out. All right, so let me try a serve with all four power sources present and let's see what happens. Oh, there it is. Big serve for an old man. So guys, understand the message of this video. Yes, a lot of the power comes out of the arm action, but most importantly, this applies to players of all levels. The arm action needs to be supported by the body to prevent you from injuries and to make the serve motion more effortless, and on top of that, you do get additionally up to 20% more power by using the body's power sources. One caveat is that if you're doing progressions, if you're learning a serve, wait on the power sources, and it's no problem to serve stationary, and as you get comfortable with the swing path of the racket, with the looping action of the racket, you can slowly start incorporating more power sources so that eventually one day, you can support your arm perfectly by utilizing all four power sources on your serve.